What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Wednesday, May 4th date, 2022. And for the those of you that do celebrate, uh, may the 4th be with you. I'm not, I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of into that a little bit, but a lot of people definitely are. It is about uh, 640 6.49 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows some movement down here into the South America region continuously uh, with a swarm of activity once again. Uh, watching this area pretty closely. A 4.3, the latest quake at 36 kilometers uh, into the Peru-Chile Trench. Let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here from the USGS. This is 2.5 and above. There's some of the activity occurring down into the... Um, Looks like the central part here of the Peru Chile Trench getting some deeper movement as well. Uh, one of these 4.5s down in there, uh, 201 kilometers. So watching uh, definitely this area possibly for, for obviously some larger scale movement uh, considering all the deep earthquake activity in this area. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen a large quake in this area of the Peru Chile Trench. It's uh, when, when was the last one? There was a seven pointer up here. A couple months back, it may have been even a few months back now. Time just kind of been flying around. Um, so watching this area closely, considering all the swarming activity here over the last week and also um, the deeper movement taking place. So uh, looking at uh, the rest of the globe, we'll go ahead, oh, at least the flat scale map, we'll go ahead and start up here. Don't want to start anything out here in the comments, right? We'll start up here in the Northern California area uh, where we did see a little trail of movement here across the Gorda Plate and the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Once again, uh, 4.2 way out there in the Gorda Escarpment area. And also this earthquake, 2.5, almost right smack dab here at the Cascadia Megathrust area. And uh, it's about 22 kilometers down into the region. So, you know, all it takes is one of these to bump start the... Uh, the full unzipping of the Cascadia, and then we've got a major nine-pointer kicking off. Uh, so that's kind of right up there, right up at the ma uh, Mega Quake Zone, 22 kilometers. Uh, also a little bit uh, deeper one, more inland, 23 kilometers for a 2.5, still associated with the Cascadia subduction zone, but a little bit further down dip into the region. Um, some movement across northern Cal into the uh, Sierra Nevada, right around Chester area, 1.5. This one's south of Mount Lassen. Nothing going on at Mount Lassen, surprisingly. Uh, no major movement uh, yet. But you never know. It's just it's been all too quiet as far as like uh, eruptive stages along the west coast volcanoes. I think we're overdue. Uh, a 1.2 in the Sierra City, California area at 1.3 kilometers and also some movement across western Nevada down through Reno and still seeing a little activity uh, kicking up here around the Walker. Oh, actually, that's way down south here. This little swarm I'm trying to zoom into. Uh, there was a couple more quakes here earlier this morning. It looks like things have kind of died off in that area uh, south of Lake Tahoe. Uh, but we do have some movement here within the last hour of 1.3 around the Walker, California area. A lot of shallow earthquakes here recently in the Sierra Nevada. Now, those that's very typical of... Um, uh, well, I think some tremendous pressure out here along the west coast, right? These mountains are um, due to the uh, plate tectonics out here along California, the Pacific and the North American plate. But these, I'm telling you, there's definitely been some shallow earthquakes up here in the Sierra recently. Long Valley Super Volcano, 1.0 and a 0.1. Some uh, typical movement here. It looks like 5.1 uh, kilometers for that uh, earthquake there for the depth. And also some activity around Tonopah kind of kicking up, uh, including a 1.2 within the last hour. So we're noticing a, a little bit of um, heightened earthquake activity here on the northern part of California and the west coast area. Uh, shooting down south into the Ridgecrest area, things are somewhat still active out here around the Coso Basin, the Coso Volcanic Field, with a little bit of swarming kicking off here, but uh, no major uh, swarms to report no major movement at all uh, Lake Isabella uh, 0.9 south of that region and as we shoot down into Southern California south of the Garlock shear zone things kind of taper off if you notice that seems like this is the breaking point or the tipping point between the pressure out here and that that kind of leads me to believe that we got uh, 
we got to watch that in the future here for some possible large scale um, movement. That shear zone is, uh, I think it's capable of a lot more than people think it is. Um, so yeah, Southern Cal, at least south of there, things kind of dying off. We did have some movement around the Barstow area uh, with a couple small microquakes, but down here, things just uh, looks like, kind of like a typical day. A lot of this movement here uh, from earlier this afternoon and all of it is uh, microquake activity. Nothing above the 2.5 threshold in that region. No major swarming to report. There is a little bit and i uh, got to point this out because it's on right across from the uh, locked area of the San Andreas Fault. This is the southern segment here that I think we've all been waiting for. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't think we want it to happen, but eventually it's going to happen. Uh, a couple of earthquakes here off of that fault system near North Shore, uh, Salton Sea region, 1.2 and a point, uh, 1.0. Looks like it may be associated with the Hidden Springs Fault, which is uh, not for sure Hidden Springs Fault. Let's go ahead and check out the. Uh, I want to check out the info on this Hidden Springs right here. Not for certain too much about it. Looks like a very small fault system. Uh, uncertain, like I said, there, I guess there hasn't been a lot of studying on this specific fault only about 20, uh, 20 kilometers long looks like uh, not a whole lot of recent activity and there's not a whole lot to even report on it so that wasn't a whole lot of info right there but there's a, that little fault system where it looks like those small little quakes are occurring well we said Southern California is a spider web massive spider web complex of fault systems out there just waiting to uh, um, waiting to uh, create havoc out here it's a major uh, fault system in this area. We've got the Pacific Plate uh, over here, North American Plate, the major plate boundary. That's uh, I think we're just kind of in a quiet time right now, folks, but I, I don't think that's going to last long. Let's go ahead and go up to Oregon where it's quiet. Washington up here around the Seattle area. Some movement on the eastern section of the Seattle Fault. Uh, way over here, we've got a 1.1. Nothing big, but it's deep. 24 kilometers into that fault system. Some movement into Mount St. Helens as well. We'll go ahead and check out the volcanic uh, seismic stations here in a little bit. Uh, over here around Idaho and Yellowstone, not a whole lot to report. And a little activity out here around Pecos, Texas. A couple threes kicking up here with the latest 3.5 in the mix of this warming activity, which has been pretty significant over the last seven days, looking at about uh, 46 earthquakes or so. In this area of Texas, and I believe we even had a four-pointer in there, if I remember right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, maybe it's been a, uh, maybe it's been a little over a week's time frame. I know we got quite a few threes and some twos. All right, maybe not. Maybe they dropped it down. It's hard to say. They're always messing with the, uh, with the magnitudes. Oh man, um, Oklahoma! Holy smokes! Some uh, some bad weather going on out there today. Uh, not only in Oklahoma but Texas, right right around Seminole, Oklahoma. I got uh, some family out there. I think the town of Seminole did get hit. That's uh, that's where my uh, mom's side of the family is from. So hopefully uh, no injuries to report. I know I've seen some damages floating around on the Twitter area, on the Twitter page. Uh, about that uh, tornado out there in the uh, Seminole region. But uh, 1.8 around Hanna, Oklahoma. Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot of movement throughout the central part of the country, including the New Madrid zone. Eastern part of the country, about the same. No significant movement to report. Uh, around the Puerto Rico area, it looks about the same as last night. Only a handful of quakes, and most of it confined here. To the southwest edge of Puerto Rico, one earthquake up here around the Mona Trough region, kind of dipping down into the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, 3.8 at 20 kilometers into that region. The rest of the Caribbean plate looks pretty quiet. One earthquake here around the uh, Nicaragua area, 4.4. Uh, this one deep though, man, deep movement into the Middle America Trench, way down in there, 154 kilometers for that earthquake. Uh, we did cover Chile area. Let's go ahead and check out the Alaska region. 
That's some movement up here on the Pacific side of the plate boundary of the Lucian Trench here. A 4.2 near King Cove, Alaska at uh, 10 kilometers and some further activity up and down the Aleutian Trench. One earthquake over here around the uh, Japan area, 4.2 at 66 kilometers into the Japan Trench, while the Kurokamchaka Trench remains quiet and sleeping for now. Uh, some further activity in the 5 range around the Philippine Trench. Uh, southern end it looks like a 5.6 and a 5.1 around Solomon Islands. Uh, and the Papua New Guinea area, 5.1, and some movement out here around Fiji, a 4.3. That one's some, some deep activity. Uh, one earthquake out here. This looks like it's the latest one in this region. I'm still watching this area pretty closely, folks. I mean, it's got to be building. It's stressing out here, definitely stressing underneath the plate uh, dynamics here in this area. Uh, 4.5. Uh, down there at 39 kilometers into the uh, Kermadec Trench. And also further south here, we got a 5.1 into the Pacific Antarctica Ridge. Did see some further movement uh, around the Java Trench area. 4.3 in the in Indonesia area and also around the uh, Afghanistan, uh, Tajikistan, Tajikistan, however you want to uh, pronounce it. 108 kilometer deep 5.0 so somewhat of a larger quake in that area but also very deep in a zone that does see some typical deep movement uh, 4.2 around greece around the mediterranean sea as well go ahead and check out hawaii where we're watching a little swarm of activity kick up here um, around the mona loa area the latest quake here though 2.1 southeast region of the big island but getting a little bit of activity here around mona loa got to watch these swarms pretty closely uh, because it's been quite a while since Mauna Loa uh, has erupted. And I kind of want to show you guys the, a little bit of info from this site here, VolcanoDiscovery.com. A lot of people know about it. Uh, but man, I tell you what, when you use this site, make sure you have a major ad blocker on. Because they will they'll literally, literally probably crash your browser uh, due to the amount of ads that they throw up here on the site. Uh, it's just overwhelming. So Mauna Loa, which I guess is now considered just one name, Mauna Loa, right? Uh, officially renamed as one word, is the world's largest and one of the most active volcanoes, a giant shield volcano on the big island of Hawaii. I want to show you guys the most recent volcano eruptions here. Check out these dates right here, folks. I'm not going to go through all of these, but the intervals between these roughly... You could probably average them out uh, 1859, eight, so maybe 10 years, 15 years or so. Um, and some even shorter. Maybe uh, seven years there, uh, 1916 to 1919. But look here, 1984. Okay, so 1950 to 1975. We're looking at a, a little bit of years there as well, right? 1984 to what? 2022? That's the longest area, longest pause in volcanic eruptions, uh, at least far as recent activity goes. So um, I, I, I think we should be, uh, right, looking at at least, I know everything changes along the plates and the, the uh, dynamics of the plates and the movement of uh, the hot spots and whatnot here for Hawaii, but man it seems like we're overdue i think for an eruption so that's why we've got to watch these little swarms i did pull up the uh let me show you guys here real quick this is the gps stations here for the mona loa area on the big island and these guys kind of show pretty much uh, what we would expect right vertical displacement uptrend here uh, looks like there was a pretty good uptick for a little while around 2015 and a little drop down around 2018 uh, and then a reamping up uh, vertical displacement here for the Mauna Loa region and I can kind of verify that with all of these uh, seismograph stations around the region let's check out the summit area of the Mauna Loa region and see pretty uh, pretty much about the same thing here a little dip it uh, looks like between 2010, 2016, and then a really big ramping up. These are millimeters. So this thing is always continuously rising uh, up into the 2022 range. 
So it's just a matter of time uh, before we see the uh, before we see that huge volcano uh, create some issues for the uh, for the Big Island. I want to check up here to the northern part. Kind of odd here to see this dipping down, a little deflation. But there's always inflation and deflation uh, throughout the region. And again, this is on the northern end, which could have a uh, an indicator of where the uh, magma and whatnot, the intrusion is coming from. Uh, looking down here on the southern end, about the same. This is kind of dipping down in the area. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, Mauna Loa, world's largest mountain and volcano, is a archetype of basaltic uh, shield volcano uh, in its late mature stage of life. And only about 600,000 to 1 million years old. Only, huh? Uh, although not erupting as frequently as its younger neighbor, Kilauea, it is also one of the most active volcanoes of the world. When it erupts, it erupts. Its eruptions are usually huge and produce large rivers of lava that have repeatedly threatened the town of Hilo. Uh, yeah. So, uh, just a matter of time. I think 1984... How many years is that now? 2022? Quite a bit. Quite a bit of time has passed here, folks. So, got to watch that. Going to tr try to do a little look at certain volcanoes on each nightly update. Uh, tonight we covered this one here, Mono Loa. And uh, we'll do some various other ones throughout the uh, next coming nights. And uh, see how that goes. But a little bit of swarming, right? Obviously right there on the, uh, looks like the western side of Mono Loa. Now, this is not big earthquake activity whatsoever, but uh, swarms on a volcano, right? With inflation, definitely something to watch. Okay, let's get into the PNSN Tremor Network map here. And again tonight, not a zip zero. Everyone's out of luck. No tremor. I kind of find that hard to believe. Here's yesterday's activity. Nothing as well. So I, I seriously find this hard to believe, folks. And I'm going to point out one uh, at least one reason why, right? Check out these, check out these earthquakes right here. Now, tremor activity occurs down dip 25 to 40 kilometers into the subduction zone. We got at least two earthquakes here, kind of upstream of the tremor that, uh, is down there around 22, 23 kilometers. So I firmly believe that there's still tremor activity ongoing here. Uh, that is definitely not being reported here from the PNSN network again, again, it hasn't happened just once. It's happened numerous times. Uh, volcanic activity here at Mount St. Helens. We'll go ahead and check that out here real quick. And uh, even these guys really not... Uh, actually, it looks like... Holy smokes! Okay, it looks like they've added... Uh, okay, I, never mind. I thought they actually added quite a few. But uh, at least today, only looks like they added one. So we'll go ahead and check out the uh, check out the seismograph station here of Mount St. Helens and see what there is to report. And again, if you guys watch this update video every night or look at seismograph stations often, you know these are indeed earthquake signatures right here. And there is a bunch of them, and most of them within the last hour or so. Let's go ahead and check out the early afternoon time frame and morning time frame from today. Again, this is Mount St. Helens right there at the dome area, right at the, the crater, the summit crater. And there's still activity happening, folks. And these are some larger ones uh, showing up here, I believe. Definitely b below the 1.0 threshold, but they're probably getting up there around 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, in the magnitude, not four magnitude, but 0.4, so 0 0.4, but still there's some activity occurring, and uh, as I mentioned, it's definitely not being shown here, these guys only want to report a 0.4 uh, today, one earthquake, out of all those earthquakes I just showed you, so it is what it is, unfortunately I do not own or operate the PNSN network, if I did, I would be definitely uh, a little bit more transparent in the data reporting uh what else we got yellowstone national park i'm gonna go ahead and check that out here real quick and uh little activity it looks like over here around the eastern section of the park uh looks see that little signature there around parker peak promontory 
And uh, aside from that, though, this, man, I don't know, looks pretty darn quiet here at uh, Yellowstone National Park. There's not a whole lot going on. Uh, Earthquakes Canada map. We have been watching some movement up here around the northern end of the Cascadia. That has since died off, it looks like, and movement up to the north now. A little bit of pressure differences here along the Pacific and the North American plate, including some earthquake activity here in the Alaska region with a 2.3, and some activity off here in the Pacific Ocean with a 3.0. Uh, the majority of Canada throughout the uh, area looks pretty quiet. Uh, nothing here. Well, we got one earthquake over here outside of the Quebec region. Little bitty speck, a 1.2 at 9.6 kilometers so aside from that uh inland interior area looks pretty quiet solar weather activity that is a different story we're watching this pretty closely um we're definitely noticing an uptrend of continuous slow um solar flare activity we did see at least within the last uh couple days or so a 1x flare right here an x 1.1 and uh, numerous M flares and, of course, C flares as well. Almost getting a continuous C flare activity from the sunspots, which are coming from the uh, regional sunspots, which are facing us right now. Or at least a couple of them are. It looks like we may be getting uh, some flaring kicking off here from this one. Did they rename this one yet? Let's see if it's named. Ooh, look at that. They did. 3006. If I remember right. And as someone had mentioned here on the comments, this is the former Sunspot 2992 around for second or third time. So I can't verify that, but that's what uh, someone, a couple of people mentioning here on the YouTube channel in the comments. But uh, this one right here, 3004, this one looks like it's getting ready to pop. Uh, getting some pretty large dynamic mixing here of the polarity of the fields. Uh, the red and the blue all kind of setting up, it looks like, for a pretty dynamic flare possibility. Um, looking at over here, I kind of wish this was in view a little bit. Kind of tilting my head. <laughs> Anyone ever do that? They kind of look at uh, a video, or if they're playing video games or whatever, they kind of tilt their head a little bit to see if they can get closer. Yeah, it doesn't work. So I'll look for that in the coming days, but I think we do have a possibility, uh, not only from 3004... Uh, which is this one right here, but also 3001 is pretty close in the setup here of uh, the polarities. We'll see, though. We'll, I think the majority, though, is going to be from 3004 and uh, the newly named 3006 sunspot. Uh, and um, it, uh, it's pretty awesome looking, these two sunspots right here. This one directly uh, facing Earth. This one will be rotating to Earth here in the coming days. Solar flare dynamics right now looks like 25% chance of an X flare. I think that's pretty reasonable. M flare at 55 and 80% chance of a C flare, but that's almost that's almost continuous. We're almost looking at continuous C flare, uh, so that should be a little bit higher, probably at least around 99%. But sometimes these guys are a little slow on their updating. But uh, I think we're a little bit uh, uh, on tune for that. But a little bit this needs to be a little bit higher, Con considering we're getting C flares continuously. So it's got to be more than 80% chance, right? Um, let's see, no major CMEs have been produced from any of these recent flares, so we don't have any dynamic setup for any storming in the next couple nights, but as always, that can change in the blink of an eye uh, if we get a significant event Earth-facing. But for now, things green across the board with only 20% chance of uh, anything happening at the higher latitudes. Let's see, what else we got, guys? Um, we checked out the trimmer map. Uh, let me see if space weather has anything different. Everyone chatting about the Star Wars Day. I see it everywhere. It's like, may the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. I think when I was a kid, I seen the older one a little bit. I don't even think I watched it all the way through. I, I, I know a lot of people are big fans, but I, I just, I never, I don't know. I think I watched the movie Spaceballs more than I did the um, the Star Wars deal. So um, I, I don't know if that's something I want to admit or not, but I did. <laughs> so there you go. 
Take it as you wish. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Um, these guys, like I said, pretty much reporting about the same data. Um, no major near-Earth asteroids incoming at the moment. Uh, got some big ones coming in, but they're not uh, anywhere near Earth. And then again, like I say, if we were looking at a dead impact of a, a major asteroid strike, you know, with 100% certainty, I'm not even for certain if uh, we would even know about it. You know, a lot of people say that uh, we would not, the general public would not be informed on it. And I, I believe that uh, to be true. Why would it cause massive panic um, if this thing were to uh, hit Earth? Uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it, folks. So I'm going to jump off here and try to cool down. It hit 94 degrees today here in California. It, it's hot. I don't like it one bit. I'm not a big fan of the heat. Um, I think if there's going to be heat, there better be humidity and some thunderstorms al along with it. But unfortunately, we got the dry, hot heat here in California, and it it sucks. It means fires. It means some, some mega fires coming up this season, I think. So that's, that's the other thing we do on this channel. We do monitor and document wildfires. Um, if you remember last year, we had a pretty significant wildfire up around Mount Lassen, Chester area. And uh, I can't remember the name of that little town, but we drove through there and everything was just gone. It was not, not good. So I uh, can't say I'm looking forward to wildfire chasing, but it is something we do here on the channel. Uh, and a lot of people do want to know about it they want to see upfront stuff so that's what we go up there obviously we have press uh, credentials and we have the authority to enter into the areas that are not normally accessible for the public um, and that's 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 kind of what we utilize to help get the notification out to people that may be wondering what's going on uh, is my town still there is my house still there we try to go up there and check uh, for things but hopefully hopefully fingers crossed we don't have a significant wildfire season here in California. Uh, it's just, it's not good. It's definitely not good. So, all right, guys, I'm going to bounce out of here. Have yourself a good evening. Again, thanks for the donations. We appreciate it. Um, if you can donate it, donate here onto the channel. We appreciate it 100%. And a lot of people have been asking, uh, can I send you a check? Can I donate on PayPal or Patreon? It's probably best for this channel to do a direct donation through YouTube. And the reason why I say that is because YouTube itself uh, does make a small percentage out of that. So any donation you make on this channel, uh, they get a little cut, but also it helps out the channel. It lets YouTube know that this channel is being successful, that viewers are liking the content that they see. Uh, and so therefore they promote the channel more and the channel grows. So um, any donations you guys make here on the channel, please do it here through YouTube whether it's through, through a Super Chat, Super Thanks, uh, Super Stickers. There's a couple different options here. So definitely utilize the YouTube revenue feature. And uh, that will not only help me out, um, but also the channel itself. Definitely helps promote the channel uh, through the whole YouTube algorithms and whatnot. So, all right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe, and uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later on. Have a good night. Peace.